Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Adwell Markets. My name is Chris, and uh, we're going to take a look at the charts together in this live webinar. Hope that uh, you are able to hear and see the screen sufficiently and properly. Uh, apologies, I think, for the incorrect time of this webinar that was scheduled. I just actually saw it a few minutes ago. I hope that um, I'm not sure exactly how it went. That perhaps you got an email indicating the new time, or did you, I mean, were you able to log in uh, without any problems, or was there some email that you received from uh, informing you of this change? I was just curious uh, if uh, how that process went, because when I logged in, I saw that it was actually scheduled for 8.45 p.m. instead of a.m., so I changed the time quickly, and uh, I clicked on inform all participants. So I was curious if that had any effect. Did you receive an email or were you trying to log in and you didn't manage to log in? You didn't receive any email, but you logged in and you just were able to without any problems. Okay. Okay, good. All righty. So uh, today, fibs and waves, we talked about it last week wednesday already so today continuation i had some computer problems over the weekend so i'm not going to show you my usual presentation today but uh, i will start with showing you the admiral markets website where you can find out more information for instance about metatrader 4 supreme edition 56 additional features of which one is very cool and i'll show you uh, as we are trading it's about risk management very very handy and I think you're going to love that one. Um, otherwise, a lot of analytics, like wave analysis, which we'll be using today. But before we start the webinar, though, I do want to show you the risk disclaimer. Normally, I show it on a different way, but this is another way of doing that. Uh, there is also the fact that this webinar is intended for global audience and may not be suitable for everyone. Uh, to find out more information about that, contact your local Admiral Markets uh, contact person um, and uh, Try to find out if it is suitable for you or not. Also, a risk warning regarding trading for exchange and global financial markets. Uh, trading Forex is considered high risk and may not be suitable for all investors and traders. Therefore, please seek the advice of an independent financial advisor for more information on that. Uh, this webinar is for informational and educational purposes only. And by continuing watching this webinar, you agree with this risk disclaimer. You can always request a copy of that, of course, by sending an email to info at admiralmarkets.com. Good. So besides the wave analysis, let's take a look at the economic calendar because today uh, is a big day from the Eurozone perspective. I guess every day is becoming a big day now. So I'm not sure <laughs> how to rate it, if it's the biggest or bigger. They're all important apparently, but today, Yes, indeed, Greece will present new or old, I don't know, um, you know, proposals for whether uh, to, to the Euro group, to the Eurozone, basically. And the question is, is there something new or, you know, is there a, a proposal that is acceptable according to what the Eurozone and European partners are looking for? So that's the big question. And it's a, quite a drama in the meantime, of course, after the referendum with a clear no vote. And, well, it's it's going to be tough. I mean, if, if both parties are at their current position, then it's difficult to see an, an agreement come. But you never know. Let's see how today uh, plays out. But trading for euro dollar obviously has a big risk. And... Um, might want to skip it today just because of who knows what kind of news is coming out of that uh, meeting room. So that's a bit dangerous. Well, we had a uh, Aussie interest rate decision that stayed at 2% and a balance of trade and yeah, the Eurogroup meeting on Greece, of course. That's the biggie. Alrighty. Otherwise, Let's take a look at uh, 
let's see. Here you can take a look at also at the technical analysis and then we'll start the webinar and look at the live charts. Here you can see Nenet talking about euro dollar technical selling into rallies. But yeah, there is a bit of a trouble with the euro in, because of the news event. We are looking indeed from this perspective at a contracting triangle with a clear resistance line above it and a clear support line. So I would say technically indeed, definitely true, these lines are important. Yesterday we had a bounce when it uh, retested the resistance, but ultimately from a news event, from news point of view, not too uh, interesting to trade it. And you can see that on the longer term four hour chart here too, even more trend lines visible with this resistance line coming in, this one and this support line. The price is really pretty tight range, tight triangle at the moment. And that tight triangle uh, is going to break eventually, but it could last. Who knows? It could just go like this for one more day, two more days, until maybe some significant news event. Uh, in any case, if one of these lines do break, technically then there is space to retest this bottom, or if it breaks to the upside, to retest this bigger top, right? So those would be technically the spaces in a normal day, like this to the upside or this to the downside. So let's take a look at the wave point of view on the euro dollar, first of all. Uh, it could certainly impact the euro pound, the pound dollar perhaps too, a bit less though, but you never know if it, it, it's a bit of a volatile and uncertainty hanging in the market. Uh, you know, so far the reactions have been mild relatively mild at least there was a gap over the weekend could have been a lot worse i think but doesn't mean that it has to stay that way um so that uncertainty is is like a bit of a dark cloud hanging in the sky and uh it seems like a storm is approaching so i got to be careful for that even on other pairs indeed might want to think about for instance taking less risk and um, being more careful about margin. Alrighty, let's take a look at four hour chart. You can see here, when looking at the last two months of price action, and we're looking at the fibs and waves. We talked about it a few days ago already, so we'll try to keep it short, but you can see that price is basically going in a range. That's why you see many ABCs and WXYs, because when price is corrective, that's the type of formations that wave counts or waves are making. Uh, when there are multiple corrections being glued together, we have a W, X, and a Y. A W, for instance, could be an ABC here, as you can see here, the C completing W, and then we have another ABC completing X, and then we have ABC to complete W of a bigger W, X, Y of Y of W. So you'll see a lot of these like corrections connecting to bigger corrections and overall it's corrective right clearly with trend lines and price going sideways ultimately in the longer run i'm still expecting a wave four to be higher but if we do break below this green line the 108 then that wave four at a higher point might not happen so from a one hour point of view it looks this and it's the same story it's all kind of corrections here here we have an ABC, and an ABC, and we have an ABC, and an ABC. And what is this? I didn't label it on purpose because it could be anything. It could be the start of an upside if it breaks through that yellow line, or it could just be a correction for more downside if it breaks through the blue. When looking at that piece, I didn't see any likelihood of one or the other side. So then I'd rather not label it if I don't think that one side has a slight advantage. So let's move over to the pound. I think otherwise I don't think it's really worth spending too much time on it. All right, this is a classical example of too many indicators. Let me put on the template here with moving averages. 
we use the uh, EMAs as uh, because of the fact that when you use fibs, it's of course good to trade with the trend, and uh, and if there is a trend, and using moving averages, we can see if there is a trend. Now, the pound dollar uh, hit the 50 fib, a big 50 fib here. That could have been the turning spot, personally, in the wave analysis of this morning. I would say we need a break above this, because if we don't break above this, then uh, it could be easily a correction for more downside. To, for instance, 155 or 154.50-ish, which is a 61.8 fib on the higher time frame. So if we break through this, that could be the signal we're going to have that space to the downside. Now, which fibs am I talking about? I'm talking about this fib, maybe on the four-hour chart that's visible too. I'll probably change these templates, these moving average colors. They're looking too much similar to the candles, actually. I'm talking about this fib. When fibbing on the four-hour chart, the last swing, high swing, low, we talked about it. Price stopped at the 38.2 last week, but ultimately break below it. Broke below it, hit the 50, stopped at the 50, right? Actually, I should put the fib like this. Stopped at the 50, and now if it's breaking below, if it continues with the trend, it could go down to the 61.8, which is 154.60. All right, so from that point of view, it uh, looks like we're in a breakout with space to that support fib. There is no trend really on the moving averages, maybe down if you exclude the long term. It's, it's actually the 21 that's pointed down and price is, is respecting that downtrend. So from that point of view, this could be a breakout happening right now. In a few minutes, this candle closes. The pound dollar is a bit vulnerable at the beginning of a London session. But depending on how this candle breaks, it could be a, a decent break. Now, uh, I don't think there's any pound news today, if I remember correctly. Oh, there is uh, medium news. That could still be something to be careful of, depending on how you handle that. Something to be aware of, at least, in the one and a half hours. Uh, I would take a look at lower time frames. We could take a look at this break as it happens. Okay. First of all, we need two more minutes before this candle closes. If it closes strongly, that means near the low, then uh, I'm certainly interested in, in taking a look. If it's you know worth trading and how. And when? This break to the downside. Now, from a wave perspective, it gives us a few minutes to lake at the waves. The pound dollar looks like this. I changed it last week, Wednesday. I was talking about this being perhaps a one, two, three, four, right? One, two, three, and this is a four. When the 38.2 fib broke after our webinar, I decided to immediately change it. Because of the fact that there are two things. First of all, wave four typically stops at the 38.2 fib. So that was one warning. Second warning was the fact that this entire zone was starting to look too, 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 too big. I know that wave four, waves four are typically large, but if you compare it, I had a strange that the oscillator is missing here, actually. Let me write that down. I have to see what it. Uh, why that oscillator is not there. All right. AO. All right. I'll check that after the webinar. Anyhow, uh, because I wanted to point to the web, to the oscillator here. The This was very clear move. And then this started to become a bit too big of a uh, correction, I think, compared to the, the upside. So from that point of view, I decided to say, OK, this is probably a bit more. Sorry about that. A bit more in ABC, and this is starting to look like an X. All right, so from that point of view, is X finished at 50 fib or will it finish at 61.8? Both are equally likely. All righty. 
Then we have the one hour chart and we can see that here I was talking about, uh, in that case, Jen, I'm talking about these red lines. Yeah, these red lines were key for the break to the upside. Now this orange line, I would say is still something to be aware of, but not a very key level. I mean, price could stop there actually I wouldn't be surprised it's a three quarter level to kind of pull down from there and then probably break up again if it would have done that right something like that would be likely something like this all right but those red lines were the key for the upside to confirm that it stopped indeed at the 50. but if it doesn't break above it and it does break below this then maybe it will retrace lower. That's the wave count at the moment. And I see that I'm actually missing the oscillator on all of these charts. It's funny, I didn't think about it. As I said, I had computer problems, so I have to do redo everything and still not up to speed with, with all the things that uh, I, I normally had. So I'll add that for tomorrow. Anyhow, so uh, pound dollar, let me take a look a bit better at this one hour chart. You can see a clear, and I'll change this 21 band so it's a bit more viewable for you regarding the coloring because that blue and red with the blue and red candles is not that handy. Let me write that down too. All right. And yeah, so we uh, we got to move back to the 21 band and to the 144, then it kind of went sideways at the moving averages here, and it could have basically broken out to either side. It broke to the downside, went to the 50 fib, as we know. So what I want to take a look at here is uh, let's see. I want to take a look at the fib sequence. All right, so I will just quickly add that. And I want to see how far this downside has, has lasted. And I'm counting how many FIB sequences we've had. This is the 55, 89, 144. So we reached 233, basically. All right, so it's the fourth level, as far as I can count. Yeah, correctly. So that means that we could make a move to the sixth Fibonacci sequence. So yeah, there's a good space, at least Shouldn't be a problem from that point of view to reach the 61.8. So now I'll move down to a lower time frame. Let me take a look at this 15 minute chart. Or maybe even the five quickly. And then let me add the Camarilla level. breaking through the L3 and the L4. All right, so personally, I'm not a big fan of trading the pound right here, but if it does make a bit of a pullback to the L3, it could be an interesting one with some stop loss maybe here, and the target is clear, the 156, sorry, 154.60. Preferably the five minute chart uh, would go back like this to the L3. Let me even uh, show it with moving averages again. Preferably actually price would go back to the 21 band and kind of close below it, 154.60, which is the 61.8 fib, something like this. And when this is back to the zero line, that should be a decent uh, short there. Let me put that same Fibonacci sequence now on the five minute chart. Yeah, it's, it's exceeded the third level 
which is important. One, two, three. So it looks like it had enough momentum. If it would not have passed, the, if it would not have reached the third, but only to the second, then I would have had some doubts. But this is a pretty, this is a pretty strong move. So I think there should be downside. Looking at this from this perspective, I think there should be some downside pressure on the on the pound dollar today. I think there's a decent probability about that. All right. So from that point of view, let me move on. I thought that the euro yen. And the Aussie and the Kiwi were interesting at this moment. This is something I think more for later on today, but the Aussie, Kiwi, and Yuryen seemed interestingly set up right now, actually. And the Aussie may be already a bit too late, unfortunately. Let me see. Now, the reason, one of the reasons is the fact that it had a big break here of these major support lines. There was a major break. Got a pullback, hoping for actually pullback to the 61.8, but it bounced off the 38.2. It was a shallow bounce. In yesterday's recap video, I said any of these fibs could be the turning spot. Obviously, I was hoping for a bit higher one, but it was the 38.2 fib probably. Let me count the time factor here, two, four, six. But the sixth candle is bearish, so it's in a crucial spot. It's going to break soon, or it might make a bigger retracement than deep. Now, considering the bearish potential on the pound dollar, the downside on the euro, the AUSD could make sense. All right, all the way down to the five-minute chart, we can see that price is breaking through uh, this support, and that's what I was what I was actually looking at uh, this morning. That's why I wanted to start with, or after the majors, wanted to right away go to the Aussie. Because of this potential break, as it uh, corrected nicely, and now there's that chance for a breakout trade to the downside. Now it's on this five-minute chart has already kind of pushed through that level, as you can see. So, what kind of pullback? Let me see. Well, actually, mm, let's see. Let's let me wait. We'll go to the 15-minute chart. Let me wait for this 15-minute candle to close. Let's see how the price responds upon the break on the 15-minute chart. So seven minutes from now, I'll check it again. Otherwise, let me show you the break that happened on the long term here. That's this break, this bottom here. And these trend lines, no matter how you draw it, it's broken. There was a massive momentum here. After a lot of whipsaws, finally has broken. So what kind of targets am I looking for on the on the RUSD? I'm looking for the minus 61.8, which is at 72.50. Now we are close to the minus 272 target. There could be a small bounce here before we continue, or we might even go straight through it. Let's see. Also, from this point of view, the weekly chart 7250 is the minus 272 target. In that case, we had a 38.2 fib, and we're going here. So there are two targets there. There's the target from this fib and the target from this fib, both at the 7250. So let's check that. I'll check that in six more minutes. And the other thing I wanted to take a look at was the Euro Yen. Euro Yen is in a downtrend on the four hour chart already, as you can see. Price is respecting this 21 EMA band pretty nicely. And price gap down, made a retracement, and could be right at the moment of making this important break of this triangle. Now the triangle is occurring at a spot where we can consider a downtrend because look at this distance between, first of all, we have price below the 21. We have the 21 below the 
144. There's a considerable gap here as well. So as we break below the 21, that is, I should draw that in red, that is a with the trend breakout trade here on the Euro-Yen. Looks very interesting to me. Now, the Euro-Yen, of course, also has the Euro in, in it. That makes it a bit riskier. But technically speaking, I like the Euro-Yen a bit more because there's at least a clear trend. The Euro-Dollar doesn't have that. That's primarily because of the dollar, the Yen side of things, obviously. So we can take a look at the Dollar-Yen. Maybe that's just as good. But this breakout from that triangle, technically, I think, uh, looks interesting. So that's the uh, breakout I was thinking about. So when looking at a one hour chart, I think a good candle close below 135.20. Now, with, what do I mean with good candle close? A candle close that is not too off, too far from the low. Something like this. For instance, the close not far from the low. Now, when I take a trade, uh, I used to calculate the risk in an Excel sheet. And the cool thing that Adam Markets has, and this is what I was so excited about showing you at the beginning, is that you can calculate that in the Admiral Markets MT4 Supreme. And I'll show you now quickly for those that are interested in that. And I think that many of you will be interested in that. Perhaps you know it already, but you go in the lot. When you have the mini terminal, you see the lots here. So you click in the lots. You, you hit the control button and then the left mouse button. And then voila. You see a lot size calculation uh, window. And it's very cool because you can use a percentage of equity or balance and you can calculate the lot size. So if I want to take 2% risk, for instance, it should show me the risk. It did this morning. I don't know why. Oh, wait, I don't have any stop loss size. Sorry. Stop loss size, well, that should be, I guess, will be probably about 45 pips. So with 45 pips and 1%, you know, I can take 0.24 lot size in this case with this account, depending on the capital, of course, on the lot size. Yeah, thanks, Pierre. <laughs> now I see your message. <laughs> the, lot, the stop loss, of course, is important. Otherwise, you cannot calculate it. So that's a lot faster and handier than my Excel sheet uh, ever can be. So that's great. And it was actually Pierre that uh, made me aware of how to do that. So thanks for that. And uh, if you find it interesting, you can test it with the MT4 Supreme Edition. That uh, You can find more information about that right here, just when you go to the website, the very first thing you'll bump into is Meditrative 4 Supreme Edition. Find out more right here. So that's very simple. So this breakout, uh, I am uh, interested in. So let's do a bit more homework now. Doesn't seem like it's ready for the breakout on the lower time frame, though. 50-minute chart, it looks a bit... Uh, doesn't look like momentum. We definitely have to break below the one-hour trend line and even this kind of this 15-minute bottom here, right here. 135.20, probably. So still need some time, but something to keep an eye on. Uh, throughout this session and then after that probably so in my opinion let's take a look at the other one i had in mind which was the kiwi probably the same as the aussie all righty 
Uh, let's see. Definitely downtrend, as you can see. There's a bit of a sloppier break at the moment. Hmm. It uh, wouldn't be a right time, I think, at the moment. Kind of pushed through already, um, as you can see. Maybe if it hooks back to the same level that I was thinking about, it's only about 10 pips difference, but the Kiwi doesn't move a lot either. So you see all time frames isn't a downtrend. So it's, it's definitely worth keeping an eye on. The question is, is now the best moment? And I don't think so as yet, as it uh, seems to be showing a doji last 15 minutes. Plus it's already moved away from the moving averages. I would prefer to uh, to wait a bit. Let's see the four hour chart again. All right, let me take a look. I think the Kiwi, the Aussie looks a bit better. Let's take a look at the pound. Let's see, two, four, five, sixth candle, not breaking this bottom. So there could be uh, indeed a bit of a retracement coming now. It's way I wouldn't look to take along because of the trend line break that was visible. I would still want to see a break above uh, 156.05-ish, right? But it could indicate that this downside is, is over for the moment, and we could see maybe some some lighter correctiveness like this, for instance. Let's see. Already, dollar yen. Dollar yen is also quite corrective. You can quickly see some uh, trend lines on the top and bottom. I think from the longer term perspective, downside break is probably better. We do have a weekly and a daily pivot point right around it. So it seems like we'd have to break a bit above or below those to uh, to get some, uh, you know, into some territory that's maybe a bit interesting. The downside break looks perhaps a bit better from a wave perspective. Let's take a look at the wave charts. But otherwise, it is a very choppy four-hour chart. But it is a four-hour chart that had some momentum, at least, to the downside here. So some momentum continuation could happen. Let's take a look. All right. Good five wave here. And then we had... A W, X, Y correction, probably. Maybe of a bigger W within the last Y right here. We're making, again, a correction. So is that correction over? Probably not. Looks like we're hitting a Fib resistance, plus we have trend lines above it, which could be a resistance spot to move back down to this 122 and maybe finally, finally break below it for a move down to 121. So from that point of view, even though there's not much space, if there's any, it looks more to the downside. Unless it starts to break above 123.70, 124 maybe, but that does not seem likely at the moment. Looking at the one hour chart, we, uh, since Wednesday, I think Wednesday we had, uh, let me see, ABC and another ABC and now another ABC, I would think. So back to those charts. All right, let me go to the 30 minute chart. Probably this fractal. Could be already the moment that uh, a break is sufficient, really. Yeah, I would think that's enough. Let me check the price one more time here. 122.57. I 
think that fractal break should be enough. So that's that would be an interesting level. Maybe not as big of a downtrend as the euro yen, but uh, a break that a breakout that could work out well too. All right, let me take a look at the Aussie 50 minute chart. Ended up as a wick here. Not a good not a good break. but still a break and now giving a retracement. So it could actually be worth uh, thinking about perhaps a short. Let me, but not maybe right here, maybe a bit higher. Let's, let me take a look at the hourly again. It's a, uh, it's has its risks because of the four hour chart Two, four. Let me count again. This is the seventh candle, which is bullish. So I might have to rethink that. Also, there's green too. Cable's breaking, yeah? Two, four, six, seven, eight, ninth candle. Not, not typical, but I guess not everything is perfect as you can see. But um, let's see this. Three, four, five, six was bullish, and fifth too. Interesting. Doesn't happen often, but this is uh, an example where my time factor rule is not uh, helping at all. But shows uh, a continuation. Interesting. Wouldn't expect it anymore. And yeah, still looking for a bounce in my opinion. That still still stays the same 50 minute chart. 50 minute chart, still looking for retracement back to the moving averages. We got a gap between the 21. The 21 has a good angle. I just want to see price go get get to that 21 band on the five or 15 and uh, then make the turn. Still the same story. Just assessing this Aussie. I don't know if um, it is a pullback, but considering this wick here, it, it might not mean anything. It might just be a retracement for more downside, but I'm not sure about this Aussie. Let me take a look at the pound odds. The pound is breaking, but the Aussie isn't. And we're seeing some retracement in this uptrend. Which maybe it's a bit of a warning that the pound could weaken more than the Aussie. So maybe the Aussie, uh, is, Aussie dollar is, could be a bit more doubtful. We're making a rising wedge on the pound odd, and it seems like at any point we can push through this 207.75 and make the fall down to the long-term moving average and fill this space right here. So the pound could probably weaken a bit more. There is divergence between these tops. Rising wedge chart formation it could be a good counter trend short potential there. So if the pound odd is a short potential soon, then the odd dollar might not be the best one. So let me, I will skip the odd USD and I will skip the Kiwi as well and focus on the pound dollar later today and keep an eye on the dollar yen break and the euro yen break. I think that makes more sense. Yeah, 
Alrighty, so let's see. Jen has a question on the pound dollar. Yes, exactly. 154.60 though, not 144.60. I think that's a typo. But uh, yeah, 154.60. Let's take a look. 50 minute chart. Basically, we have, uh, we're past the one, two, third, fifth sequence here, which means that we got space to the downside. I think once it exceeds second on this time frame, or it's the third, it should be okay. The momentum should be sufficient. So yeah, the targets are indeed four, five, and even six, because this is a 50 minute chart. And on a 50 minute chart, we can get to the sixth one easily, which is 154.60. But of course, it's a bigger fib number as well. So I think we got some good potential uh, to the downside. Alrighty. Uh, let me see. Otherwise, other charts, those were my favorite ones, I think. Pound, Euro Yen, and Dollar Yen. I use the Kiwi. They look bearish, but somehow it's still, still be a bit cautious. Because of that four hour chart, perhaps, and the pound odd. So, how about other charts? Let me think. Does anyone have a preference, maybe, at this moment? What do you What do you see that could be interesting? These were my, the ones I had in mind. But maybe there's some crosses that are interesting. Urien. Urien, well, that's the one that actually I'm interested in. And uh, I'm looking for a break below 125.20 here. And a break below this trend line on the one hour chart as well. 50 minute and one hour chart support coming here at 135, sorry, not 25, 135.20. And I would be interested in taking that break there. Looks like we're getting a break. I would like to see how the 15 minute candle closes if it does break. So I'm keeping an eye on this chart. Looks like a good trend. Looks like a good downtrend. And if it breaks through the support, then I think it's a good setup. It's one of the most interesting ones together with the dollar yen and pound dollar. Any other currency pairs that, that you have in mind? So, uh, Rush, Roshan, if I if I say your name correctly, let's we'll keep an eye on this uh, Euro Yen in the remainder of the webinar here, because it seems like it'll be pushing any second. Yes, if you're selling Euro Yen, indeed, then uh, in that case. The trade is going well if the euro is weaker than the yen. And you want the euro to be weaker or the yen to be stronger. Indeed. All right, euro pound maybe quickly just to see the difference between the euro and a pound. Big downtrend, but a big rally as well. It's quite interesting.
price kind of hanging in these moving averages. Let me try to see how far this flip sequence went. Not too far. It only hit, well, it's the euro pound, but still. For upside, really to be interested, need to see it above um, these, at least these tops. Otherwise, it looks more bearish. Let me redraw the FIP sequence now from this perspective. Downside, probably same story, at least below these bottoms. Otherwise, it's stuck in the middle of nowhere. So the euro pound doesn't seem to have much of a winner. Euro yen. Yeah, looking like it has a potential now, in fact, to push through. I mean, if you look at the 50-minute chart, a clear momentum. Correction, good candle push sideways looks like it's pushing it through so from that point of view uh an entry could have been maybe already here or or in the next candle or even upon the break with the pending order um, in this webinar let's keep an eye on this candle 14 minutes from now and see if there's a, a candle close that is uh, strong Okay, so take a look 30 minutes from now. Get a bit more confirmation of the break here. It looks very probable, but still, rather wait for the confirmation. All right, so with that 30 minutes to go, anything new here? Pound dollar still pushing indeed. Yes, for cable person, I would like to see that go back indeed to the five or 50 minute chart. Then pounds will probably, 15 minutes probably will be likely. We'll probably just hit it and then go down. That's what I'll be looking for. So once it hits the 15 minute band, can zoom into the five and look for the first candle probably uh, below this, uh, this this moving average again. That could be the break. So it's like a pullback, break, and continue. This would be the pullback. And then continuation. Actually, sorry, this is the break. Pullback, continuation. Uh, well, basically, once it hits the band, it kind of um, it it makes a retracement. It's it's like you know that the pullback has made enough sufficient retracement that the continuation of the trend after that is has a decent chance of continuing. If it makes too shallow of a retracement, then you still have that potential for a deeper retracement. All right, so this webinar was waves and fibs. Now, the waves, I personally only Keep an eye on that on these majors. So we looked at those. Perhaps we can add a bit more fibs than we did so far. Does uh, anyone want to take a look at a you know a particular pair in mind? In the next 10 minutes, we're waiting anyhow for the euro yen and the pound dollar and 
and this dollar yen to uh, to break. Those are the main my most three interesting at the moment. Perhaps Aussie, if it if it manages to push through, I guess this this bottom. Probably the same for the Kiwi too. Of course, the FIB was important for the four hour chart target that we mentioned already here. That was this FIB. But we can use also Fibonacci targets for the pound dollar to the downside. Sorry about this. There we go. We can do that by fibbing from here to here and seeing which targets have been hit. Target 155 is the uh, minus 272 from this fib. Here 155 too. So at least 155, but 154.60 seems likely too. But 155 is a round number. Shouldn't underestimate that either. So anywhere between 54.60 and 155 when looking at fib retracements and targets. No one has a preference. Let's see, one question. Uh, if if price makes something like this a very aggressive upside that goes all the way to let me take a look if it hits the 78.6 fib and goes above the 61.8 I would be careful because then the momentum is showing back to the upside. Then I would be careful and I would rather wait for the, probably it would be an upside break, but then a break above this is needed. Dollar Cat was the other one that was pushing actually indeed. Seems to have a good break. Should have maybe looked at this one instead of the Aussie. Oh well, uh, but the dollar cad here, this this particular resistance in the uptrend on the 50 minute chart. If it makes a hook back, maybe it's to the same level to about 126.65 here, it could still be worth it. It isn't a good uptrend. Your odd is a bit choppy at this moment. It doesn't look that interesting. This is the odd New Zealand, a bit funky looking. It has a big uptrend, but it's back at support. And perhaps more of a bouncing spot. Here too, looks a bit like a momentum to me. Here, pretty strong momentum on the pound Swissy as well, and a breakout candle occurring at, at this point. So this too, could be a good uh, a good breakout here on the pound. So see triangle, little triangle there. If this hour closes near the low 
that could be a, a could be even worth a trade right there with the stop loss above this uh, this top with the target at 146. There is that news event though. Be careful of that. Might be better to wait for the next hour. Let me quickly add the. Forgot to look at it. We can take a look at the indicator that compares the currencies instead of looking at currency pairs. One second. USD looking the strongest, pound one of the weakest, New Zealand one of the weakest, pound and New Zealand shorts looking the, one of the better ones. Swissy is rising here. Aussie falling, but was relatively stronger, so it's good we, we're careful of the Aussie here. I'm missing the yen somehow. That's weird. Ah, here. Good. And the yen, one of the strongest, indeed. So you can see <clears throat> more or less what we were looking at already. Makes sense with the indicator as well. Dollar strength, yen strength. Maybe your yen a bit better than the dollar yen from that point of view then. Right? And pound weakness, kiwi weakness, and not even that much euro weakness at the moment, actually. Bit of CAD weakness. So pound New Zealand strong, weak, sorry, dollar and yen strong. So the pound dollar makes sense. The Kiwi dollar makes sense to look at that. Pound yen and Kiwi yen. Kiwi, new, yeah, Kiwi yen. All right, this is the pound yen. We didn't look at this one yet. Also, not bad setup indeed. Could be, in that case, maybe better than the year. And it does have the news event, but so let's take a look. This is the hourly, actually. It already had a break. I was looking at the euro yen, but uh, the pound yen already had the break. The reason why I like the euro yen a bit more was the fact that the moving averages were not as inter like uh, they were not as let's say pulled together as uh, as the pound yen. The pound yen they were all grouped together. The euro yen had some space here. That's why this morning I liked the euro yen a bit more. But when looking at the relative strength and weakness, you can see that the pound yen already made the break, in fact, and it's heading lower. Anyhow, one more minute, and uh, we'll see how this candle closes. All right, that's a good close. So I don't see anything uh, wrong with this uh, this trade.
I think that's a good breakout. And the stop loss would be above here, about 53. So that is about uh, 42. So I can sell this. Now, a small little pullback can always happen here. I mean, it depends how precise you want to get, uh, but the webinar will not last forever. So, you know, at this moment, a bit of a pullback to retest this line, I, I wouldn't be surprised, but something uh, that might be worth it. Target, well, it depends. I mean, if you're looking for a TP, uh, let me add the Fibonacci sequence here. This is the fourth level, so either the fifth or sixth. Fifth is close, maybe the sixth is better, 134.25, 134.25 probably. or 134, 28, or 30, just a bit above. So this year yen uh, break looking good to me. Pound dollar keeps pushing. I think we could eventually, we'll see the end of it, I think. We're getting into Maybe some small little push still, but eventually we'll see five minute charts not doing that. It's getting into some type of oversold zone. I mean, it doesn't have to be right now. It could be now or the next 10 pips, but eventually I think we'll see that retracement. Dolly is not pushing it's because of the dollar strength and but the yen is strong too so the dollar yen is not a good one it's we pound dollar is a good one pound yen euro yen or maybe the kiwi indeed but the kiwi yeah oh wow it made a push through this uh red line and the kiwi could be good too if let's see Maybe some pullback. Into this zone, let's see what price level that is. Sixty six. Maybe a bit even a bit higher. Somewhere in here, probably. Alrighty, so at this moment, I'm only in the euro yen. It's a pity because the dollar cat is, is breaking out nicely and the pound yen too. Oh well, I in, in the long term, uh, let's see, I think that um, the pound dollar could still be a good one if it doesn't eat too much of this uh if this profit the potential at least i don't expect that but Dollar accelerating a bit here. 
Well, with regard to the euro yen, um, if let's see, this hour candle closes, hopefully it will close something like this. And uh, I would say every hour using this candle high as a trail would make sense as well. Main target once again 135.30, 134.30. And um, expecting this uh, this triangle to uh, give a good break, basically. All right. So that uh, chill stop I don't think would hurt, and would uh, limit risk pretty fast, even at the top of this hour within 10 minutes. If the candle low high is used here, could be moved to 134.43, already reducing the risk by some um, 15 pips probably or so. And that's again about 30% less and every pip less risk is good. So from that point of view, uh, you know, we can, I would be trail stopping this here yen as each candle develops. It's a 15 minute trade. So I think using an hour of trail is, is a good, you can even use a 15 minute trail and use 15 minute fractals to trail stop it as well. All right. So that, uh, those are my parameters for the euro yen uh, setup. Let's see. Every setup is just one setup, of course, but I think uh, that's about it. I mean, if there is a time factor thingy going on, if, for instance, the, the trade doesn't um, develop as quickly, for instance, preferably I would like to see almost every candle push. If it hits this 134.75, I would allow one more pullback, something like this, for instance. And I look for a continuation. I would not exit if the bottom doesn't break within five to six candles. I would still allow one pullback because I think there's a high chance of a follow through. But after it breaks, if it breaks, pullbacks and continues, then on the next continue, I would be a bit more tighter with the stop loss. Oh, what's this? Uh, because in that case, uh, I want to see uh, price move down, bounce, and the next continue, I want to see a, a finish of that move. So if it stalls a bit here too much, then I would probably take it off here due to time factor and wouldn't wait for the very last pip here, especially if there's already divergence between these bottoms. Does that make sense? So here, I would be patient. Probably still have to, you know, move the trail stop accordingly on the hourly chart, but I wouldn't use the 50-minute chart. Unless it really, like at the end of the day, it's doing something like that. Then obviously, well, then it hits the one-hour trail. Then if it does continue, but then I would start being a bit less patient. And if it starts showing too much length here, like five or six 15-minute charts, not 15-minute candles, excuse me, not breaking that low, then I would be inclined just to take the profit at about plus 70 and not wait for the plus 80 or so, you know? Let me be more precise. The entry here is at, if I aim for 134.30, it's 85 pips. So then I would be okay with 70, 65. You know, if there's any sign of weakness around at this level here. Let me take a look at the pivot point. The L5 is indeed at 133.25. There's a confluence at that target. And how about the normal pivot points is showing a daily S2 at 133. Yeah, so 133.30, I think. Looks good. 133.50 is about halfway the daily S1, S2. That's why it could be a spot, could be a spot as well, perhaps. So anywhere here, I think, is the target. And then it depends when price gets there, whether it shows momentum or if it shows some, some lack of momentum. If it doesn't break five to six, five minute candles within this zone, that could be the a good spot to exit. Five minutes left until this euro yen hourly candle closes. Hopefully, it closes with a good close uh, below this 
these fractals, and that would give another indication that there's a good breakout potential. Let's see, one more question on the pound dollar. Let's see, on a 50 minute chart, to pull back to the 21 band can yield. Let's see. You're talking about downside targets. If we put a fib on this swing high, swing low. And I would personally expect I mean, this is pushing really a lot in the meantime. The fall is over 60 pips before London opened. I'm not sure. Is there any news event or something like that? Because it's a bit, almost a bit uh, awkward, a bit untypical. But I, normally speaking, the, would expect to bounce any point in time because it's accelerated so far. Wouldn't expect much more. If it does, indeed, any probably these two fibs now seem the more likely ones, 38.2 and 50. And uh, would expect price to get to the minus 61.8. There's 51.55 at least. Or the minus 100 at 154.70. Yeah, so basically a great four-hour candle. Just need a bit of a pullback on that four-hour candle on the next one. And it should be good to go for the downside. So pound dollar, I think, still good. And uh, I would be really surprised if it doesn't give a pullback anytime soon. Probably the news. Now the news is indeed within 30 minutes. Something to be cautious of. The news, you never know, though. I mean, the news event is uh, is a... Um, is an item in its own right. So if it is good news for the pound, it will move down, even though it is a bit oversold at the moment. And looking at any oscillator here, it would be showing heavily oversold. Now, of course, oscillators don't mean everything when the trend is strong. But typically, at the beginning of London, this should be it. But there's something driving it that is quite forceful. I don't know why is there's any news. 30 minutes from now, there is a pound news. So I'm not sure why the market would be moving that much close to event. But um, I don't know. It's untypical. But in any case, it uh, when the news events happens, and if it is, if it does give a retracement and then starts to push below the 21, that's, that's the moment I'm looking for, for that down trade. So I like the pound. It just need a few things to happen. Dollar yen not is out of the window at the moment. The Aussie broke, so it's back in the picture together with the Kiwi. Sorry for the background sound there. It's some truck, normally a quiet street. I think it's probably uh, the garbage. And uh, yeah, the, the Aussie, almost a pity. I had some doubt because the four hour chart suddenly, but it is breaking the bottom. Retrospect, this was a good, actually good pullback. Oh, well, those things happen. But uh, same thing with the Aussie, in fact. Pullback here, too, for downside. Same thing. Kiwi, too, pullback, downside. Uh, Dollar Cat, too. Same story, basically. Um, this morning, looking at these multiple pairs that we were looking at. Not the Dollar Cat, but... Did have it in mind. They seem the uh, most interesting at this point. Euro yen is the only one I'm in, and it's one minute from a one-hour candle and seems to be pushing nicely. Pao yen had a good break too, but as I said, I I discarded it. Thought the euro yen looked better just because of the moving averages that are better set up on the euro yen.
So it seems to be a good dollar market today. Let's see, five minute chart just closed. Bullish candle could be maybe the very first sign that we'll finally see that retracement. But it's an early one. And um, could be a bit um, too early. From a one minute point of view, I know we're diving very low in the time frame, but you can see a move back to the 21 band. So if it starts to use that 21 band here like this, that could be, you know, the signal we're trying to, we're going to make that retracement back up. Not that I want to trade that, by the way, because there's anyhow pound news and it's a retracement trade uh, against what I expect after that. So I'm not that interested in trading it, but it could be something to look for to have an idea when the retracement could happen. That's what I mean. Alrighty, folks. Well, thank you so much for, for joining. If you have any questions, by all means, let me know. Otherwise, we'll have more webinars this week. It is I hope you know that the euro yen trade that I'm in at least is clear and that if you have any doubts or questions about it, please use the time now to, to clarify it. All right. In the meantime, though, next webinar is on Wednesday. We'll take a look at strategy tomorrow. Then Wednesday evening, then we we'll take a look. It takes a look at the Forex Rain Bar Pro. It's a proprietary strategy. And Thursday, then I take a look together at retaining your peak focus during the entire trading day. So three webinars lined up. Of course, yesterday, then had his weekly FX recap on Mondays. And that's next week, Monday again. So that's what we'll have this week. No questions so far. Okay, well, be careful. I know it's maybe, you know, psychologically annoying to, to see this move and think, oh, I wish I was in it. Or even the Aussie, we were analyzing it and the fifth Kiwi too. But uh, it's, it's not good to jump in now because, you know, when you jump in now, you'll see it probably will make that retracement. So be patient. Wait for the pullbacks, rather, in, especially now on the uh, Kiwi and the Pound. I think the Kiwi and the Pound are a bit better than the Aussie because of the relative strength index that we're looking at. Kiwi Pound are interesting. But wait for the pullbacks, I think. And the Euro Yen, let me take a last look at the hourly candle. Hourly candle, good candle close. So I think, you know, it's showing potential here. I'll use this candle high, as I explained in my strategy, as a, a trail stop, go to 135.41, and I reduced the risk already pretty much instantly. And uh, I'll actually put the TP on as well, right there. That's the TP. So this is the setup I have. I hope this is all clear how I'm treating it. And if it gets close to it, I'll keep an eye on the lower time frames to see if uh, an earlier exit is, 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 is wanted. All right. Good trading and uh, talk to you soon. Cheers.